Welcome to Travelog. I'm Mark Edwards. Now, you're probably wondering what this sweeping mountainside metropolis is behind me. Well, it's Chongqing. It was once China's wartime capital and is one of the four cities in the country that enjoys the same importance as the provinces. As Southwest China's largest and most populated cities, it's a wonderful mix of tradition and modernity. And it's famous, I've been told, for hot pot, hot views, like the one we've got here, and also hot girls. Let's go and explore. Hot is the word of the day and of the trip. The weather's on our side and it's time to spend a day discovering what Chongqing has to offer. It takes around two and a half hours to fly from Beijing to Chongqing and only two from Hong Kong. But as soon as you get in, you better get moving as there's so much to do. Chongqing is much more than just a place to kill time before you take your three gorgeous cruise. Perched on steep hills overlooking the point where the Yangtze and Jialing rivers converge, it's a bustling metropolis that five million people call home. If anything, Chongqing is a city where old and new sit comfortably together. The traditional and the modern juxtaposed along Chongqing's rolling hills. Every travel destination has its list of things to do, places to see and things to eat, which is lucky for us, otherwise we'd be out of a job. And Chongqing is certainly no different. It means double happiness or repeated good luck. This is because Emperor Zhao Dun, almost a thousand years ago, had previously been made the prince of the city. And on becoming emperor, he changed the name in celebration of these two happy events. The city is an adventure 24 hours a day, seven days a week, as it is arguably even more impressive at night when the lights turn Chongqing into a visual feast. Geographically, Chongqing puts me in the mind of a koala bear hugging a tree. The city is the koala and the mountains are the trees. With this in mind, there are many different forms of transport to take you around the city. However, unlike the majority of Chinese cities, you'll find bicycles more conspicuous by their absence. And having seen the steepness of many of the Chongqing roads, it's easy to understand why. It's also worth noting that the city is filled with long staircases and escalators, again, thanks to the numerous hills. So you might be used to taking a train to work, a bus to work, even a subway to work. Here in Chongqing, we take a, what is called, a bus in the air. That is a bus, a cable car that goes from one side city to the other, across the river. It costs two kwai. I'm going to go and jump on. There are actually two cable cars in Chongqing. One runs across the Jianling River and the other across the Yangtze. For tourists, it can be a fun new way to travel. But this is how a large proportion of the Chongqing population gets to work every day. If you're just doing it for fun, try to avoid making your maiden voyage in the morning or late afternoon, as you'll find them packed to the rafters with commuters. I was clearly far more excited than everyone else there. It must have looked like a goofy idiot to all those working Chongqingers. It's just a standard form of transportation for the majority of these people. So I'm sat here in the cable car in, uh, in Chongqing and it's a bit of a strange feeling being in a cable car in a city uh, rather than on a mountainside resort, a ski resort, which is uh, normally what uh, most people are used to. But here in Chongqing, the locals actually use the, uh, the cable car as a form of public transport to cross from one side of the river to the other. Really cool. 
China's mightiest river, which is also the third longest in the world, is the Yangtze, known in Chinese as the Changjiang, literally meaning long river. It was and is still very much of a port town, and even these days, you can still witness cargo ships sailing along the Yangtze and Jianling rivers. As a busy river transport hub, the city, 2,400 kilometers upstream from Shanghai, lies at the gateway between eastern and southwestern China, and because of this, enjoys an enviable commercial advantage. One of the central areas of Chongqing is known as Chao Tianmen, and it's a place which, in many respects, exemplifies the lifestyle of the people of Chongqing. It's laid back, relaxed, with groups of friends sitting everywhere, chatting away and watching the river flow nearby. I reckon I could easily get used to this tranquil way of life. One of the truest facts about Chongqing is that it evolves year on year. And if you want to keep up to date with these changes, head to the Chongqing Urban Planning Exhibition Center. Now don't laugh, and certainly don't judge until you've been here. So I'm here at Chao Tianmen at the Chongqing Urban Planning Exhibition Gallery. Now, this kind of place may or may not be your cup of tea, but it's highly regarded and I've heard a lot of very good things about it. It's a chance to see how Chongqing was in the past, so the history of Chongqing, how Chongqing is right now in the very present, and how Chongqing hopefully will look in the future, which is what this uh, miniature model in front of you will, uh, will give you a chance to see. Chongqing 2020. In my mind, these types of places usually conjure up a nightmarish mix of maps, dust, books, boredom, and dare I say it, a contender for top 10 places not to take children. And I think of the exact opposite, and you have Chongqing's take on what an urban museum should be. It's the personification of fun for all ages. There's games everywhere that are effortlessly mixed with information so that everyone can take something away. Here you'll find all the information you need on the city. Interestingly, there seem to be as many local Chongqing people here as tourists, which is a testament to the museum. So, uh, grab myself away for a second. I'm playing a very, very fun uh, flying game where I've got a bird's eye view in a plane over the whole of Chongqing. And uh, I get to learn a bit as well as I fly over certain places. Little bubbles come up and give me points. And uh, I get to learn about that specific place. Who said urban planning was boring? This is awesome. Any of you who've been to the La Villette Science Park in Paris will appreciate how much fun learning can be. And this is absolutely true of this place. Even the most rambunctious little children will have a great time here. It has allied state-of-the-art technology with an emphasis on playability and, above all, fun. It's a fully hands-on experience, which is a treat for the eyes. There's also a plethora of information on the culture and traditions of Chongqing. Everything is short, sharp and well thought out to keep you interested throughout. That's a 21st century innovation for you. We've got how uh, Chongqing used to look during the war in the 1940s, the Second World War, with some uh, 3D virtual imagery and uh, some miniature modelling behind. You'll get an idea of how alive Chongqing used to be. But in this respect, not a huge amount has changed. Certainly, the markets are very much brimming with life. There's something alluring about finding a place where everything is so fresh. And you just want to take as much of this organic produce home with you to cook up a feast. Don't miss out on the market, even if it's just to buy some fresh fruit. There's definitely something mystical about this older part of town around the market. People of all ages can be seen wandering the streets, and you could almost taste the food in the air. I can't quite make a connection to any other city I've been to. Certainly not when you add the steepness factor in. The buzz allied with the produce and methods of cooking make this feel more like some ancient village than an area in one of China's largest cities. The contrast of having spit porters loaded with goods everywhere around also adds to this feeling.
。哎，先生，你买什么？这个是什么？贸易糖。贸易糖。啊，贸易糖。糖糖是吗？啊，好。啊，我买一个吧。买一个吧。多少？是一块钱吗？块钱，块钱。嗯。再拿一个吗？好的。我尝尝一下。啊，尝一下。哇。So apparently some sort of uh, sweet. Woo! Pretty good. I have an absolute blast strolling around, taking in the atmosphere. It really is unique, to say the least. It's so simple. The stroll is short-lived, however, as I need to carry on with my exploration of Chongqing. Back to the car and modern reality. Now, you may or may not have heard of General Joseph Stilwell, an American war hero who, you may be intrigued to know, is highly revered in this part of the world. He even has his own museum, which is definitely worth the detour. Tucked away on the side of a steep hill, you can find a stunning view from its courtyard and the contrast of having wartime jeeps parked in this peaceful location is surreal to say the least. The museum is housed in the former residence of Stilwell himself, who lived here during parts of World War II. A fluent Mandarin speaker, Stilwell was the commander of the US forces in the China, India, Burma theatre. The museum is rather unique amongst Chinese historical sites in that it honours the US involvement in the Second World War. At the end of the day, you really feel like you've visited the home of a highly regarded war hero. It's as though Stilwell never really left. All his possessions are still faithfully kept in place. Photos adorn the walls and I almost feel like I'm trespassing. I say almost because A, I'm not really, and B, it would be worth it if I was. Well, having had a chance to quickly stroll around, I feel like I've been uh, transported back in time to the Second World War, uh, to the 1940s, and, uh, and I'm actually in the former residence of General Joseph Stilwell, who was sent here to Chongqing, to the uh, wartime capital of China, to help coordinate the, uh, the resistance against the Japanese, the Allied resistance against invading Japanese forces. And uh, it really is quite funny to see the American-Chinese relations all together in, uh, in one house. And here, the meeting room where they would have planned all of their strategies and how to defend an attack. It's pretty impressive. Hi guys, I'm, uh, I'm Mark, and uh, where, what, what are your names and where are you from? Uh, I'm John Funk, and I'm from New Hampshire in the United States. Okay. Uh, Dave Cowling, and I'm from the Chicago area, the suburb of Chicago in Illinois. Okay, and uh, what, what are you guys doing in, uh, in Chongqing? Well, we're here as part of uh, a tour of the country, and uh, we've just been on the um, Yangtze River with a tour boat, and uh, the destination ended here. Right. And we're spending a day in, in Chongqing, and then we're going to travel from here. Okay, okay. How are you finding Chongqing so far? Well, we well, just, just arrived. <laughs> Literally just got <laughs> off the boat. First time. Okay, first okay. Time. And, we, and, and we're both very yeah. pleased to be here because yeah. uh, we wanted to come here on our um, a scheduled visit. Uh, we we, we really found this in the guidebook, and we want to honor one of our heroes from the war. And uh, uh, General Stilwell. Yes. And, the flight tiger. and uh, having had a, a quick uh, scan around, how do you feel about the museum? It's, it's beautiful. Yeah? Yeah, it's wonderful to come yeah. to places like this and imagine um, how the general was uh, living in this place. You'd be well advised to take a quick detour to Red Cliff Village, which is situated about 20 minutes from the city centre. There's a history museum here which shows how some of the soldiers lived during the war. To get here, take the 104 bus from the Bei Chu Lu bus stop. It was in this building that the cooperation between the Kuomintang and the communist forces flourished in defending China against the Japanese invasion. It was during the Second World War that China joined with the American and Allied forces to fight off the Japanese. 
1937, the national government was relocated to Chongqing, and the city became the wartime capital of China. In many respects, this was due to its advantageous mountainous environment, which made it much harder to bomb, as well as its proximity to the Yangtze and Jialing rivers. You'll find that many Chinese tourists also like to come to the city, as there are numerous reminders here of Chongqing's role in shaping China's history during and following the war. It was during the Second World War that numerous factories and universities were moved from eastern China to Chongqing, transforming the city from inland port to heavily industrialized city. Chongqing is made up of many districts, with each one different to the next. They all have their own characteristics, which define it and differentiate it from the others. It's during one of the drives that we come upon an intriguing little area tucked away on the west side of town. It's an art district where you're more likely to find a giant rendition of a zoo on your building than anything else. Thanks to its proximity to and support from the Sichuan Fine Arts Institute, the entire area has been given a facelift. There are wall paintings and graffiti scattered everywhere, and this is also where Sichuan's up-and-coming artists reside and show off their work. Together with Chengdu and Kunming, Chongqing makes up the hub of artists, which are renowned around China for their work. However, Chongqing has continued its remarkable transformation from heavily industrialized city into a modern metropolis. A modern light railway, for instance, is quick and efficient and highlights this perfectly. The main town centre, however, is like most modern metropolises, filled with well-known high street brands. There's an obvious mix of Chinese and Western shops and restaurants, and in truth, I could be anywhere in the world right now. So I'm here in the very centre of Chongqing city. Now, you may or no, may not believe it, sorry, because around us it could be any major metropolis in the world. You can see all of the major brands everywhere around. It's absolutely teeming full of people. There's music, street performers, uh, food being sold everywhere, sort of gadgets and toys. It really is an absolute loft, jibbity doozy. And uh, I'm actually going to go and do a spot of shopping myself. but. It really does exemplify how much of the old and new has come together in the centre of the town. See ya. It's clean, friendly and filled with people. Now Chongqing is famous for having some of the most attractive ladies in China. And the town centre is almost like a catwalk. If you're a keen people watcher, this city really won't disappoint you. It's only five minutes walk from the town centre to Hongyadong, a wonderfully traditional looking landmark filled with shops, restaurants and fun stuff for tourists. It's here that I pick up some souvenirs for my friends and family, as well as a quick chance to try out some tasty treats. Uh, I've uh, just, got, just arrived in Hongyadong. It's uh, about four or five minute walk from the town centre and it is a lovely, lovely little area filled with stalls where you can pick up some snacks, some noodles, some jowza, some chicken wings, uh, all sorts of meat, what they call a chuar, which is uh, meat sticks, but you, obviously you can also have fish and such. Here we go, what have we got here? We've got chicken feet, we've got ching sai, which is a sort of a bark, like mushroomy fung fungi type thing, lots of stuff. Down at Hongyadong, you can eat and shop, and I'm comforted by the sight of so many locals here that it can sometimes feel a bit too ready-made for tourists. Check this out. I think this is how you make the uh, soya beans. They crush, uh, crush the beans here or, or tofu. Cool. It really is an eclectic mix of things to eat and buy here. There's so many different types of Chongqing snacks to be had here, you can spend an entire afternoon playing pick and mix. The place is packed with tasty little stalls, 
and I had no idea about half the things I was eating. But if your appetite is a little too fierce and you want a full-on meal, don't despair. There's plenty of big restaurants here to satiate your hunger. That said, I wasn't quite ready for a big meal right now. Still needed to buy some gifts for some friends. Hello. Well, I feel like, like taking some sweets, or well, I actually don't really. This is what? Is it? 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 A very well endowed uh, little piglet, and I think this uh, be a nice gift for a friend. You can buy me one. Can. Oh, how much? Ten thousand. Ten thousand. So it's easier to get. Ten. Okay, ten quid for one, which uh, I think it's nice for a gift. Can buy me one. Ten thousand. Thank you. Thank I was very happy at the range of handicrafts I could purchase here. They might not be Chongqing specialties, as they can be found throughout China, but they do make great gifts. So dexterous! Can't believe it. I should call her my lucky little Chongqing piglet. Sorry. Look how cute she is. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Chongqing at night is almost worth the trip alone. Bright lights and alluring restaurants will ensure that whatever state you're in, you'll want to eat out come sunset. One of the main roads where you can find some good restaurants is Nanbing Lu. Chongqing is famous for hot pot, but you should also remember how fondly Sichuan dishes are viewed throughout China. I was aching to see whether the myth of Sichuan spice was true. Were the dishes really as hot as I'd been told? The answer is a resounding yes. I tried dishes that I knew well from Beijing, and there was no doubt that they were far spicier here. Still extremely tasty, though. Spicy, spicy, spicy. I think Chongqing must be one of the few places on earth where you won't mind developing an ulcer, as the food is just so tasty. Those of you on a diet, however, might find the temptation a little too strong, as many of these dishes are simply irresistible. My view is. You only live once. We head up to Nanshan after a hearty hot pot dinner. It takes around 20 minutes by bus to get here, and once you've paid your 20 quid entry fee, you're treated to an absolutely majestic sight. So one of the things you must do when you come to Chongqing is head up to Nanshan. That's the South Mountain between eight and ten, and you can see it's pretty popular as it is right at this moment. But what you'll be treated to is Chongqing in all of its splendor. Check it out. We were lucky enough to come up here during the day and the night, and both views are completely different. If you can come up here in the afternoon. Take in the view, head down the hill for some early dinner at the many restaurants nearby, then head back up when the sun is down and the Chongqing lights come on around 8 p.m. You won't regret it. Well, all in all, despite only being here for one day, what a day it was! I did more than I could possibly imagine around the centre of town. I'm tired, 
but satisfied. My Taurus thirst has been quenched. Well, till we start again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs>